Whenever thinking of Australia, I often picture koalas, red desert, and just something dry and arid, full of kangaroos. What I don't picture are tropical rainforests, because those only exist in the Amazon, Southeast Asia, and Africa, right? Well, I was proven wrong. When I was doing my research on ecoregions, I found out that Australia actually has the oldest surviving tropical rainforest in the world. So this had me wondering, what are they like? Why do they exist just here? What animals call it home? What plant species are here? What bird species are here? What is its climate like? The Queensland tropical rainforest exists on the northeast coast of Australia. You guessed it, Queensland. These rainforests cover three separate chunks of land with the north, middle, and southern portion. The northern portion is the largest at 20,000 square kilometers. It stretches 400 kilometers down the coast and on average 15 to 65 kilometers inland from Cooktown to Townsville City. The middle portion covers 13,000 square kilometers, stretching 300 kilometers down the coast and on average 30 to 70 kilometers inland from Bowen to Clareview. And the southernmost portion is the smallest at 2,000 square kilometers. It extends about 50 kilometers inland and is, covers 75 kilometers worth of coast just north of Yapoon. Altogether, these forests cover 750 kilometers of Australia's coast, on average going 50 kilometers inland from the sea for an area of 35,000 square kilometers, covering 0.5% of Australia's total land area. The lines on how to define a rainforest are gray. However, the most common definition is a consistent closed canopy forest and receiving a minimum of 1,500 millimeters of rain a year, or five feet of rain. While Australia does have other rainforests, such as the rainforest in Tasmania, or the Gondwana rainforest on the southeast coast, they are temperate in nature because they are south of the Tropic of Capricorn. The Queensland rainforests, however, are the only tropical rainforest here. North of the Tropic of Capricorn, being in the eastern shadow of Australia's Great Dividing Range, which is a 3,500 kilometer long range of mountains and rolling hills, these Queensland's rainforests benefit from the orographic effect. With the trade winds constantly blowing the ocean's moisture towards Australia, the moisture gets trapped by the mountains, where the precipitation then falls as rain. A notable peak in this range is Mount Bartle Frere at 5,300 and 21 feet in elevation or 1622 meters. It is the tallest mountain in Queensland. These mountains rise very quickly from the coast with flat plains and low hills suddenly rising to peaks of 1000 to 1500 meters in elevation over the span of just a few kilometers. And while the other areas of Queensland also benefit from the trade winds and the precipitation, it's a lot more seasonally, often receiving no rain in the winter creating the tropical savannas that surround these forests on all sides. These areas, on average, receive 1,500 millimeters of rain a year. So that's a check mark for the rainforest. With the wettest area around Innisfil receiving over 3,000 millimeters annually, or over 10 feet of rain in a year. Winter and spring are the dry seasons here, receiving 100 to 300 millimeters of rain each season, or four to 12 inches. It is the summer, the wet season, where these really thrive, receiving over eight to 1200 millimeters of rain or two and a half to four feet for the summertime. And in the fall, the rain start to fall off again, receiving 400 to 1200 millimeters in the season or 16 inches to four feet. These rains find their way down the mountains among the many small drainage basins in the area. Being in the northernmost tip of Australia, it benefits from the tropical temperatures. With a mean temperature of 24 Celsius, the temperatures dip with an average low of 12 Celsius during the winter and peak at a max average of 30 Celsius during the summers, leaving it very warm. The combination of heat and rain leaves it with a hot, humid climate, perfect for rainforests. This forest is the oldest rainforest in the world, surviving since 180 million years ago. It's older than the Congo, the Amazon, and the Southeast Asian rainforests, having some of the last remnants of an ancient Gondwanan forest. This forest was once spread across the continent of Gondwana. However, as the supercontinent split, it went into three chunks. The forests of South America evolved into temperate rainforests and steppe at Patagonia, 
Antarctica froze over. And as Australia kept moving north, this pocket of rainforest managed to keep in that tropical zone while the rest of Australia dried out, making it the last remnant of this once massive forest. The Queensland tropical rainforests are very similar to the rainforests of Papua New Guinea, but differ in a few important ways. The Australian forests tend to have much more ancient plant species. There's more seasonality in the rainfall. They're less vast in their size, but are much more unique in their marsupial species. But why are they so similar? Well, throughout time, and especially during the ice ages, Papua New Guinea and Australia were once connected by an area known as Sahul, as recently as 8,000 years ago. And this land bridge enabled some animal species, plant species, bird species, you name it, to move back and forth. While it wasn't open for very long, they still retain their diversity from each other, but will share some species such as the cassowary. This forest contains many ancient plant species not found anywhere else in the world, such as some species of cycads existing for over 200 million years. They resemble palms, but bear their seeds in cones, similar to conifers. They also contain tree ferns, with some species reaching up to 50 feet in height, with a 12 inch thick trunks and ferns reaching up to six feet long, which thrive in the understory. There's also the king fern living here, with fronds reaching up to 30 feet in length. They are the largest ferns in the world. As well, there's the fan palm, which also reaches 50 feet in height, with leaves up to six feet in diameter. They're essentially trees in themselves. Speaking of trees, there are over 920 tree species here, such as the red cedar, reaching up to 200 feet in height with a 10 foot thick trunk reaching into that emergent layer. There's the spur wood, which reaches up to 115 feet in height with its buttress roots. The quarry pine, which reaches 160 feet. And finally, the idiot fruit tree, which is evolutionally similar to the oldest flowering plants which evolved 120 million years ago. It is the last of its kind. But why is it called the idiot fruit tree? Well, its Latin name means individuality, referring to how unique it was. And over time, it just got badly translated to idiot. This forest also contains many epiphytes, which are plants that grow on the surface of other plants, such as orchids, moss, and lichens. Trees are often covered in vines and lianas as well. Similar to the plants, the 100 plus mammal species here are unique and many are primitive, with 11 of these species being found nowhere else but these forests, such as the endemic musky rat kangaroo, which is the smallest kangaroo species weighing in at just one pound, and it is the most primitive of all kangaroos, hopping on all fours, similar to rabbits. There's the coppery brush-tailed possum, the northern greater glider, the red-legged patamelon, the Lumholtz tree kangaroo, which is the smallest of the tree kangaroos, Bennett's tree kangaroo, and the northern quoll, which is the smallest of the four quoll species. There are over 370 bird species that visit this region, with 13 of those strictly endemic to these rainforests. These include the golden bowerbird, the lesser sooty owl, Victoria's rifle bird, and pied monarch. There are other eye-catching birds living here as well, including the black butcher bird, the buff-breasted paradise kingfisher, the metallic starling, and of course, the most famous bird here, which is the endangered southern cassowary. It is the largest of the three cassowary species, weighing on average 130 pounds and coming in at five feet tall, making it the third largest bird in the world. It is shorter, but stockier than the emu. They're pollinators of the rainforest, eating fallen fruit and seeds, then dispersing them around in their feces. The reptiles and amphibians living here include the green tree python, the saltwater crocodile, the frilled neck lizard, the northern leaf-tailed gecko, prickly forest skink, and the white-lipped tree frog, which is the world's largest tree frog at five inches in length. In this area is a butterfly hot spot as well, with Australia's largest butterfly, the Cairns birdwing, which has up to a six inch wingspan residing here, along species such as the Ulysses butterfly and the red lacewing. This is a biodiversity hotspot and one of the top centers for endemic life globally in just this tiny chunk of land. Two unique areas that I kept noticing during my research of this area included the Daintree Rainforest, which is a national park famous for being the oldest rainforest in the world, and Cape Tribulation, 
where rainforest meets the beach and the beach meets the Great Barrier Reef. Jungle biodiversity and ocean biodiversity meeting along these shores, making it a really cool spot. These forest current range is very limited to the rainfall. At this point, these are the only areas receiving this much rain, which is why it's important to protect it because it won't find anywhere else. And speaking of protection, it is very highly protected. While agriculture and urban development do threaten this area, it is still one of the most preserved ecoregions in the world. Over 40% of this ecoregion is protected under national parks and forest reserves, such as the Daintree National Park, the Kumbalumba National Park, and the Karunda Forest Reserve. These forests are protected under law and their conservation efforts are funded by a growing ecotourism industry. Australia is not simply grassland and desert with some forests on the edges as I thought. I had no idea there was such an incredibly unique and ancient rainforest here. It is home to species found nowhere else. Some really big old birds and some plants that have existed since the dinosaurs. The Queensland rainforests are a living fossil. And even though this area is less than 0.5% of Australia's land mass, over 40% of Australia's species call it home. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you want to see some more eco-regions of the world. And until then, see you next time. Thank you.